We'll go ahead and uh, um, call this uh, meeting to order of the Rules Committee. This is a meeting of the Representative Town Meeting uh, Rules Committee. And uh, the first item on the agenda is, is it's actually the minutes for number 20. That's when we were assigning all the committees. I must have typoed that or something. But anyway. Um, so I'll ask for approval of the minutes for November 20. Um, I have a motion in favor. So moved. Thank you. Second? I'll second. Thank you. Uh, comments, questions, issues? Joe and Michael. <laughs> We've all been doing this a while. Okay. <laughs> I hear none. All those in favor, please? Aye. Um, aye. Aye. Okay. I don't... Uh, no's, please. I don't see any. Abstentions? I don't see any. Uh, minutes are passed. Uh, we will uh, we'll do a report from the, well, without objection tonight, I, I need to add assignments of uh, new folks who are just joining the RTM. We have to assign them to committees. Uh, we'll take the report from the Rules Technology Committee first and then go into uh, signing the committees. Uh, speaking Wait, on behalf of the Rules Sorry. Technology Committee, yes. Can, can we have an update from the noise so somebody can leave? Um, you know, the guy wearing the Yes, shirt. I, I was having yeah. next in the... Okay. Uh, next probably isn't good, good enough at the point that go. Jack is making. All, All right, right fine. <laughs> um, without objection, okay. I'll, uh, we'll hold off on uh, doing the assignment of the committees and uh, uh, up, get an update on the noise ordinance from the, our distinguished uh, Mac Patrick. Thank you. Yeah, I'm Mac Patrick. I chair public health and safety. Yeah. Um, our committee and TGSNA has been charged um, to, I, I guess, by by you by rules to to work on a noise ordinance, and we've we've been given some directions from the from the selectmen. Um, they they basically give, give us kind of a narrow charge. They're they're interested in, in us coming up with hours of operation for um, garbage pickup, contractors, painters, landscapers, um, homeowners uh, doing their own their own own work, also maybe the parties on the premises. So those are the kind of things we're going to be look, looking at. Um, we, we did have a, a, a meeting with, um, that Frank Kemp and I rather, had, had a meeting with Chief Anderson and First Selectman John Zagrowski we met with them separately to discuss the noise ordinance and their take on it. Uh, Chief Anderson feels that do setting hours is, is doable and enforceable. You just want some, something that's tangible. Um, John said that he wanted to make it clear that the selectmen are in favor of establishing reasonable hours. Um, they do not, at this point, want to be heavy-handed with banning equipment, um, i.e. gas leaf blowers. Uh, he advocates for Darian to be a follower, not a leader. And in the future, he anticipates technological advances will drive the market. So that's kind of where we are. We're going to be working on, on setting um, hours. And going forward, um, public health and safety will be meeting uh, a little bit later this month, and, and we're going to be gathering information. A lot of it is just getting information that's already out there. Um, I know Town Hall has assembled some stuff, so, so that's kind of, kind of where we are at this point. Okay, um, timing. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good point. Um, Frank prepared a, a kind of a timing. We, we anticipate in February and, and March get it, gathering information, and we, we'd like to think by, by summertime we could come up with, with an ordinance, you know, with, with work in, me, in between. So that's, that's kind of our, our thoughts. I mean, if, it, if you know, we, we want to also have some public, public comments, so we'll have, a, have at least one public meeting. So with all those things together, we, we think we can do something before the end of our session, before June. We, you know, June, before we break for the summer. Okay. So fingers crossed, that's, that's what we hope for. All right. Questions? Okay. You can see the Frank Bale. No, never mind. Uh, you know, we got to get some way here, otherwise he would have been here. So he, he asked me to be here. So. That's great. Thanks for coming okay. by. Uh, Good luck tonight. Okay, I'll keep you yeah. posted. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Good luck. Thanks. Good luck. Good luck. Um, we should get a noise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just text us if we go to the school. Okay. All right. Jack, I'll reach out to you. Some of us might be taking it. Thanks.
Just saying. Just saying. Some of us might be taping it and can fast forward through the commercials. A uh, report from the Rules Technology Committee. Lois? Hi, Thank I'm you, Lois. Lois I'm not is uh, COVID bound, but uh, oh, no. join us. Anyway, um, it's really weird to be part of the meeting and really in my own kitchen. <laughs> this is very strange. But anyway, um, I'm glad to be here. Um, at least I'm not wearing my mask, so that's cool. <laughs> so uh, a number of things on technology that um, have, have started to move in a, a really good direction. I'm going to, Mike, can you please start with a couple of things that we've been working on? Sure, we've begun the, we've, we've transitioned to Zoom from GoToMeeting and uh, Mr. Davis and uh, Adele are now trained and ready to go and have had successful meetings on Zoom. The um, auditorium, um, uh, RF, uh, the uh, uh, PO has been given to the vendor and uh, they're ordering the equipment and there is some supply chain and uh, the town administrator said patience is the byword, but it will get done and be before the AARP funds have to be used. But um, so it's underway. It's just ordering the equipment and getting it all in so they can begin it. So we don't have a start date yet. Uh, blah, 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 blah. And that was everything, right? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to, thanks, Mike. Um, it's exciting to see um, both of those things moving along. I'm gonna, my, the next update is about the website. Um, a couple of things were brought up in some of our past meetings, and I just want to update where we are. Um, the one of the the simple one was the RTM wasn't listed under elected officials. That's been corrected. Um, to see the the next thing that we talked about was on the town calendar. If you if you wanted to see going back, it turns out that there's a button down at the bottom that says View All Events, and if you click on that, that goes back for everything that's been entered. Most of it starts in September, at least for our stuff, starts in September of 2023. But going forward, it will have, um, you'll be able to go in both directions. So that's that piece. The third thing was notify me wasn't working at the time, but it is now. Um, if you sign on to notify me, it will tell you when um, calendar the calendar events are posted as well as agendas and minutes. Um, the one thing about Notify Me is it's only as good as the person who puts it online to check the box that says send out. So we're going to encourage, and Chris has been doing a great job on that. So that comes through. Um, the one thing on Notify Me is you don't have any options. You get everything. Um, and we're, we may put in a request to see if in the future that you could select just the, when you do agendas and minutes, you actually can select which committees you want to see. But notify me as all committees. Um, it hasn't been burdensome at this point, but we'll see what happens. But anyway, it works great, and that's doing it. Um, as far as historical information, we're going to be working with the town on getting the minutes and agendas up. That's a, two, that's a project for this year to work with the town. Um, for the RTM, 2023 is online. And the big news, ta-da, um, is that her email address is we have been given permission to have the ability to forward our own email, our email addresses, our town email addresses to an email address of our choice. So the, the, what that means is that we can all have dairynct.gov addresses. And for those of us that want to keep using it through um, Outlook and use it through the town website, that's fine. We can continue to do that. For those of us who want to just have everything forwarded to some of, of some email that we designate um, that is is doable and it, the messages will stay in Outlook if you mention that. Um, the big proviso on that which is why the town was hesitant to let us do this for a long time is that um, one we need to remember that if we use our personal email that to communicate with people that they will see our personal email. And secondly, that if there, for some chance reason, is a FOIA request, it's our personal responsibility for getting all the information and, and emails that we've been using on our personal emails. But that makes a standardization, which once we implement this, um, will certainly help Krista and, and the town communication as well as the effectiveness of using Outlook. We will 
Um, the plan right now is to spend the next month um, crossing the T's and dotting the I's to figure out a plan and an approach and how we're going to go about doing this, what we need to do. I'm thanking Krista in advance, and she's already put some time in with me on this, and Mike, and um, to make it work. And we will give, we will have a, a full report next month to lay out, this is our plan, this is what we're doing, and make sure you, it works for all of us. Um, but this is a big step. We've been trying to work on this for a long time of how do we resolve, how do we do it so that people can all be using Connecticut CT, um, DarianCT.gov for the emails, but also for those people that want to actually not use Outlook, that there's a way to make that happen. So that's a major, um, major step forward, and we're really looking forward to implementing that this year. Are there any questions? Yeah, I've got one. Uh, not a question, but um, I got an opportunity to have that done as a test for my ct.gov because I do use ct.gov. One of the advantages of sending it to my personal is that if I'm on my phone, my ct.gov is not on the phone, but it means I can look at documents on my, um, my other email that's here. So that is a big advantage to having it. And it's very fluid. You just have to remember, wait, wait where did this generate from? And get back to ct.gov. Uh, thanks, so. Jim. I want to add one more piece to it that the way it works is that we individually will sign into our Darian ct.gov account and set it up to go to the email of our choice. And you can change it whenever you change your emails or whatever you want to do. It's really under our control where the duplicate message, or, or if you want a duplicate message, and where it goes. So if that part is not, the burden is really going to be on establishing all these emails and, and getting them all set up. Um, but that individuals, but that the town doesn't manage our stuff anymore, that we can do that ourselves. And that will be a huge boost for the town clerk and town clerk's office. The other point, it seems to me, is putting the town business on one email site. I think that's that's really getting every everything in one place. Um, what what's being done is is not a help as far as FOIA is concerned, because ultimately, if the uh, information is winding up on your computer, if you get FOIA, you can you know you can still. Uh, uh, have to pull stuff off your personal computer to to comply, uh, but it's it, it's a it's a way to to make the approach to doing business for the town in one place, and I, I think that's a great step forward. Um, anything else, Lois? No, well, I I do I can't not just hint at there's a phase two. Which may have to do, which may be part of uh, having email addresses up on the web instead of our home phone numbers and addresses. So, fingers crossed that this really works and it'll solve a whole lot of problems. Okay, thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> next, we'll do uh, an update on uh, Appendix B. <clears throat> uh, I'll make Jack. it. I'll make it real quick. <laughs> if you look at this agenda. We have virtually everything but two items on here, um, and so the time of myself and others have been on January and February in two budgets, so we'll probably get back to work it in February. But we will be meeting with people at that time. Okay. <clears throat> Understandable, but progress is important on these things. Thank you very much, Mr. Davis. Um, update on Great Island. Mr. Adeletta. Yes, sir. <clears throat> I think since we've last met, there were two meetings of the GIAC. Um, and of course, the uh, Eastburners passed the last full RTM. <clears throat> so, at the uh, Earlier of the two prior meetings, the November meeting, um, we had a new uh, chairman of the committee elected, uh, 
Monica McNally, who's now the chair of the GIAC. <coughs> After some opening remarks, the committee take a, took a look at I uh, actually heard some comments from Ed Gentile, the Director of Public Works, and Mr. Campanella, who gave us an update on uh, some repairs and needed repairs for some of the various structures. Uh, the big item noted was the transformers that were at that point slated to be removed. They've since been removed. Um, the committee took action on a design for what's referred to as 23A, that's the access road. Uh, there's a little bit of a presentation done on that, a concept, if you will. <coughs> a concept was presented. Um, and then moving on to the, oh, Mr. Table of the committee uh, expressed concern that the public or people interested in learning about GAC were having to go to different parts of the website, the government website, and suggested maybe development of a home page related to the GIAC. There seemed to be some consensus that would be helpful for folks. And then following up on the December meeting, uh, there was another update by Ed Gentile and I think Mr. Capitano as well, uh, speaking to several of the items that had since been completed since the November meeting, they would be the uh, transformers had been removed. There is a further discussion of the process necessary for the Great, uh, Great Island Access Driveway uh, to go through its approval process. The various boards is going to need to go to. Uh, Ed presented, along with the uh, consultant, a couple of different options uh, or variants on the, on the driveway for the community to, to consider. There was discussion uh, by Ms. McNally and Mr. Zagratsky regarding uh, possibly retaining a consultant for development of a, a concept or master plan or, have to, or a consultant of some sort. Uh, and then the uh, RFQ process was discussed. The familiarized folks not familiar with the RFQ and the RFP process. And then there was uh, extensive discussion that you know, having gotten several hundred people on to the island via the tours that were offered, uh, perhaps trying to get pedestrian access uh, to the island. Uh, more or less as soon as possible. Some timelines were mapped out or discussed, but, but obviously the, uh, the uh, ongoing plan. Or could you speak up just a little bit? The ongoing plan and the update of the road access um, is going to have to be worked out alongside those pedestrian access plans. So those are some of the main topics I'll address a little bit more fully uh, with the full RTM at our next update. Seth. Okay, great. Seth, thanks. Yes, Jack. Um, I'm going to send something to, um, to Monica on this, and I've already mentioned it before, as people have come to me. The chart, the original charter from the Board of Selectmen of what that committee should be doing has evolved. So it really should go back to the board of selectmen so they can expand the charter of that committee to do what they're now doing. I have no problem that you're doing it, rather that we're moving along, but from a process perspective, it really should go back to the board of selectmen to now cover some of the other areas that were not in the original charter. I might, I might add to that. Uh, it, it seems to me that this committee ought to be looking hard at how to form a permanent entity that's going to run Great Island because everything that you start doing in Great Island is most likely going to have long-term implications. And the, the, the governing body for whatever that's going to be uh, it seems to me ought to be formed and, and get up and running uh, so that there's a, an overall vision that's going to be the vision for the future for, the, for, for it. And so I would just bring that, put it on the uh, table and say, hey, you know, we need a, some sort of a permanent entity that's going to be running this thing. 
That's, that's, uh, that, that has come up a couple of times under the banner of governance, generically. Except, but, uh, that is one of the things that consultants do in determining a master plan to suggest yeah. structure. Yeah. Yeah, that, but that wasn't necessarily in the original no, order. I, and that's all I'm saying is just have them, board of selectmen, say, here's the new expanded role so that you guys can go on and prosper. What you're doing is great. It's just outside of the what they originally signed. And we would have people stop bugging me. Um, I can add also yeah. that after you approved it in December that the closing, Wayne can attest also, on December 21st, the closing occurred of the town purchasing the cul-de-sac and the easement and then the sale of the Ziegler property to LP and R L L C, all both of which closed on the 21st. Great. Okay, Mark, that it? That's it. Okay, thank you. That's terrific. Uh, why don't we proceed? Um, it's not on the agenda, but without objection, I want to add it. We, we, it turns out we have some new folks who have joined the RTM, and we have to assign them to committees. So uh, let's, uh, let's do that. Uh, Mike, do you want to? So district... Um, Lois has got my computer. I, the Candal required a long software update, and the bandwidth wasn't enough in time to do it. So um, I can't make adjustments. Oh, Liz, oh, uh, Lois, you can. You can make adjustments in real time because you're sharing the screen. So we have one for District One. District One. Where do you, Lois, where, nice. do you want, where do you want to assign District One? Uh, your mute is always muted. Um, we're going to assign John to TGSNA to keep a balance across our district. Um, but if you felt really strongly that somebody else was needed for public works, we could do that because he has strength in that area. But right now we're pro proposing that he go on TGSNA. Make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so okay, and I need to, wait, I need to, oh, there it is. Okay, now I can do that. Yeah, so you can make the change. Yeah. Uh, District 2, uh, we have two new members, both of which were previously uh, on Public Works in their uh, previous iterations. Um, one wanted uh, uh, Parks and Rec, but uh, there was no way we were going to put an 18 person on there, so Michael and I are suggesting Liz Bacon go to her second choice, which is Public Health and Safety, and Richard Aponte, who was on Public Works and has had a career at Con Ed and understands, has a tremendous understanding of infrastructure go back on public works, which was his second choice, but he provides a, a, lot, of, a, a, a lot of skill set to, um, to all areas the public works deals with. So Liz Bacon to uh, public health and safety and uh, Richard Aponte to public works. And Lois, who was the other person? Uh, John. Uh, John Sartorius. And he would go on TGSA. Room four. Room four. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, District 5. Mark? 5? That's the new one. Sure. Uh, um, so? Okay. so we have two brand new people. Um, Kate, well, Kathleen, she actually goes by Katie. She, um, her, her first choice is education, and we would love to put her on there. She actually, I, I printed it out. Um, she's a PhD in communications, 25 years as a professor at Marymount Manhattan College, 12 years in college leadership at Marymount Manhattan College in various roles, Associate VP for, for Strategic Initiatives, Interim Vice President for Student Success and Engagement, and Interim Vice President for Academic Affairs, and Dean of the Faculty, Associate Dean of Academic Affairs. Um, so she has a very unique background that we, I don't think, have seen in a very, very long time. Uh, she has one child in the Darien Public School System who's at the high school. So. We were trying to find someone for education, and she came along. So, hopefully, you all agree with that. Last name. Her last name F is L E. L E. It's up there. L E. L E B D. Uh, B E S C O. B E S C O. Yeah. Um, and then our second person is Michelle Donzer, and her first choice was P Z and H. She's a realtor in town, um, so we um, would like to her on P Z and H. Great. Okay, any comments? Thoughts, anybody? One no. question for Krista. That be, 
some of these committees have meetings before the RTN meeting. I know ours was not sworn in. Can they come to you and be sworn in, or they have to wait to the RTN meeting to be sworn in? They were committees, but they couldn't vote uh, unless they were sworn in. Or they all be, oh, they've all been sworn in. They've all been sworn in. in. Okay. Okay. I'm going, I, yeah, so yeah, I got everybody. Yeah, Everyone's so set. Okay. Okay. Everyone is set. Okay, okay uh, then can I have a motion to assign those folks as noted? Uh, thank you. Richard Wilson. Second? No, Richard came in. He did? Yeah, did he did. Second for Bill? And just like. Yes. Okay. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Okay. Aye. Aye. Okay. Opposed? I see none. Extensions? I see none. Assignments are passed. Um, a district three, just FYI, still has two open seats, but I haven't heard any communication about the caucus. I don't know what they're saying. No, we've been looking. Okay, perfect. Okay, terrific. All right, um, now we'll get on to uh, additional, uh, these are items just for the uh, RTM. Um, first, uh, we've got to take care of this vote to put a person on the Board of Ethics. There's been a suggestion uh, on two of these items, the Great Island update and the uh, and this Board of Ethics, in view of the length of this meeting, this RTM meeting coming up, that maybe we would postpone them to the next meeting. Uh, I just throw that out to you. Um, as we're putting together the agenda, uh, maybe we could move those items. Um, the uh, Connecticut Early Voting Act is something new. Uh, we have to assign a committee for that. Um, uh, TGSNA, I think. Uh, so, can I have a motion to do that? Uh, TGSNA, Jack, thanks. Second, Joe. Um, all those in favor? Whoa, 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 hang on. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was that motion for? Uh, to put, uh, to uh, make TGSNA the assigned committee for the early voting act. Got it. And you have the two registrars of voters here. Yes, that and, item. and welcome to registrars of voters. Thank you. And that was where they? Joe and Jack, or Jack and Joe? Let's Doesn't matter. Either way. Either oh, way. Oh, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was Jack, Jack, and, Jack and Joe. Jack. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Alphabetical order. Okay. Thank you. Um, the the context of the Early Voting Act uh, uh, is that uh, towns can, uh, are, are asked to set up a, a location uh, and they can have more than one uh, for uh, voting, early voting. Um, there's an option to have a public hearing on that, but I think the parties involved all kind of got together and had a discussion about it and decided that that was not necessary and that they could have town hall be the, uh, the, the, the place where you could come and vote early. Uh, does anybody want to add anything to what I said? Wait, do we have to, is this something that needs to be on the January agenda because we have the primary in April? Yes, we've been okay, asked. That's what yep. I wanted to know. Yep. Thank you. I've asked that uh, we put this on. And uh, so, so that's great. Um, so I'll continue, and then we can vote to put these items on the agenda together. Okay. Um, <clears throat> the next are uh, the appropriation and bonding authorizations. Uh, those were a holdover from the prior meeting of the RTM, and uh, we've assigned uh, F and B and. We've already assigned the committees for these, so this would be just a matter of putting these on the agenda, the RTM. Uh, the additional appropriation for renovations for the three schools are, um, we have to assign uh, committees on that, that the F and B in education, I think, for those three. Unless anybody had an objection, I'd take a, a motion to put F and B primary and Education secondary on these three items. I'll move that. Okay, and second. Thank you, Susan. Uh, all in favor? Okay. Opposed? Aye. I, I see none. Uh, abstentions? I see none. 
Um, next is the appropriation of a new fire truck for Norton Fire Department. Uh, I had uh, PHS uh, as primary F and B. Primary because it's a bond. Okay, so we're gonna we make uh, F and B first, right. primary. And then PHS secondary. Right, and all we're going to be doing is talking about the financials, um, public health and safety. We'll get into the detail of what what bells and whistles are on the fire. Jack, I'm sorry. Primary. Yeah. Could you so, also yes state the primary and secondary for the Hanson and the sewer? Yeah. Just so uh, we have primary is F and B to introduce because it's right. bonding, and then. On the um, school sewer, it is um, F and B. No, no, yeah, well, we're primary on all the bonding. And then on the sewer, and um, it's also public works will go into the right. detail of what we're doing. On the Hanson Road, it will be public works and public health and safety because the police commission acted on approving the closing of the road and traffic. Are they both secondary? Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, where were we here? Um, so, um, well, I'll take a, uh, a motion to on the fire truck uh, to make uh, F&B primary, public health and safety secondary. Have a motion, please. Thank you, Mark. Jack, second. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Uh, opposed? Aye. Uh, I see none. Abstentions? I see none. Motion passes. Uh, <clears throat> next is uh, uh, Board of Assessment Appeals approval to add new members. Um, and uh, that, um, I'm, I guess F and B is yeah, where I had, where I was coming. I um, we just don't know who requested it, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, there's no executive summary. Um, the hi ish history is every time we have an, a reval, we add two members. The Board of Selectmen add a, a two members to that board for one year terms. So this is giving approval for the Board of Selectmen to make such assignments. So that's what it is. It's consistent with prior years. Um, we just don't have an executive summary on it. And I called Kate thinking that she did it. And she, she wasn't the person who originated it either. either. So um, I'm assuming it came out of uh, the Office of First Selectman someplace. Uh, the origin was Tony Himeki, our, okay. our assessor, that's what I would who yeah. came okay. to me. And I did a little research. These are for the alternates. Right. Remember, right. so I just wanted to clarify because the yeah. agenda doesn't state. These are for the two alternates. And then, actually, Wayne got involved. Right. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll give Tony a quote just so we can have a brief. Tony is not involved in this. Okay. All he knows, he just needs a body. Okay. We need some executive summary to... I mean, I can write it if you want me to. But <laughs> I will. But I'll, but we should I'll, get something. I'll get one for you. Do we need to do this this month, or can it wait till February? Is there timing yeah, on this also? They're already starting. Okay. Yeah, right. Okay. No, Got it. I wasn't sure when they started. Yeah, yeah they yeah. need to have their, okay. they have the three stated elected, and then they need two alternates. Okay. So did I get the, did we assign the committee at this point? Yeah, point? This, we yeah. have to vote on it. Okay, so we have to vote, uh, the, uh, have a motion to uh, put F and B on as the on the Board of Assessment Appeals. Wait, who did, who are you assigning? Sorry. F and B. F and B. That's why they gave it to me. Wouldn't TGS and A be secondary? Well, it's we'll not, there's done. no legislation involved really. Okay. Wait, wait, what? You're not, we're not changing an ordinance. All we're doing is authorizing it. Right. And, uh, um, I don't think that's the correct. ordinance is already there, right? Uh, Council. Yes. The simple way to explain it is that the state statutes provide that the town can do it, appoint these new people for a limited period of time. If you do it by ordinance, we were appointing people, but we didn't have an ordinance. Let's give it to the ordinance. Oh, all right. So it's so TGSMA. It so give it to TGSMA. One thing off my plate. <laughs> <laughs> 
That works for me. Hey, Joe. That'll okay. teach Frank. So I have a motion to uh, make uh, TGSNA primary on the Board of Assessment Appeals. So, uh, thank you, Susan. I'll second. second. Thanks, Mike. Uh, all those in favor? Okay. Opposed? I see none. So, um, abstentions? I see none. Uh, motion passes. Um, tax assessor authority to give more time to receive commercial information without penalty. Uh, that we did. Is that an ordinance again, or is this? Uh, I had T. I had F and B because it was a tax assessor. But we we had agreed at earlier meeting, I believe, although I don't know if we voted on it, that because of the tax implications, F and B would be primary and TGSNA would be secondary because of the the knowledge base. To be honest, but for Wayne, we talked about whether or not we're actually going. We can follow state's attachment effectively, but are we going to write an ordinance or will the resolution be enough to work? The resolution becomes the ordinance. Okay, fine. So we're, we're just going to give uh, the background. Um, Tony had sent a, a memorandum with some detail that yeah. appeared in both the Board of Selectmen and Board of Finance meetings. Uh, Karen's extracting that, and when I get a copy, I'll forward it to you. So then, yes. this is more of a practical issue for Tony. Tony deals with this all the time. People are required by statute to give him certain information so that he can properly value the property. He thought it appropriate, as many, many towns do, to allow his sister to give these folks additional time if they give a good reason for doing so. That's all he's asking for. Right, right. And, and without penalty, because there would be a penalty. Right. And the penalty is if I'm not mistaken, 10% yes. of their tax liability. So it's not a small... It's not a lightweight, yeah. And how much time is involved here? Uh, uh, there's, there's time in the statute as to when those are supposed to be filed. I don't recall. They're it. supposed to be filed. The It's supposed to be filed June 1st yes. with the tax assessor. And the form for filing is supposed to be sent out 45 days prior to June 1st. And then I think they're given um, either three or four months to mm -hmm. catch up if they're a little bit behind. And this becomes more relevant now that we have the larger apartment complexes because it's based upon the rental, the rent rolls from those complexes which will assist Tony in determining what the assessment for that property is. It's any kind of expense statements which are very important for Tony to have. And sometimes these folks have a good reason as to why they're not ready to give Tony immediately. Tony wants the authority to expand that into the property. It's not right. a really big deal, just gives it to the authority. Okay. Great. And if, by the way, just because this was discussed at the Court of Finance, um, with the reporting on this, because we're really a cash basis organization right. until the end of the year when we do our approvals. So it's not as if somebody's late and you book the penalty and then you take it off. So it was agreed by the Board of Finance that the control would be similar to what's written off by the uh, tax collector on an annual basis. Then any of these would be um, presented on an annual basis to the Board of Finance. All right. And Seth, can I ask one more? Just yes. More, but then uh, but this is all said and done. So, Wayne, could you confirm that these will be two new ordinances to the town code and muni code upon approval? I think the first one will be an ordinance. Okay. The second one will be granting authority to the assessor as allowed by statute. Okay, so one change to muni code. Okay, right. thank you. That's, that's part of the reason. Why? Because of that, that if TGS and they wanted to report, they could, but because there will not be an ordinance on the tax assessor, right. just giving authorization, they may not need to address this. Okay. Oh, I'm not involved. I no, just want to make I'm sure that it gets the meeting code when I'm all is said and done. Joe. You right. guys don't really have to address it if you don't want to. If you do, so we need a motion. We need a motion. Uh, F and B primary 
we're going to throw TGSNA as secondary, or I'll just call if anybody else wants to, ref any other committees want to report. And I, you can I, raise your hand if you want to. I, I might just make us primary and we'll go through it real quick. Okay. So, uh, motion please to make F and B primary. Thank you, Joe. Second, to please. Sure. Thank you, Mike. Uh, okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Um, opposed? I see none. Abstentions? I see none. Motion passes. Um, next is the uh, Board of Education admin unit contract. Uh, I need a motion. Uh, ed education uh, primary, F and B secondary. Yes, Susan. I'll second. Second, Jack. Comments? Okay. Ready to vote. All in favor, please. And uh, opposed, I see none. And abstentions, I see none. Item passes. Uh, next is setting the agenda for the January 22nd meeting. I've sent out a uh, draft for you to just help because there was so much, <laughs> there was so many. Uh, I'm thinking that on the draft we take out the update on Great Island and the vote to place one person on the Board of Ethics uh, to shorten it a little bit and because the Board of Ethics has a quorum they can operate and uh, the update on Great Island could go to the next uh, meeting without affecting anything greatly. Um, so the agenda would include the vote on the Connecticut Early Voting, the amending the appropriations on uh, sanitary sewer and uh, Hanson Road, additional appropriations for the three schools, and, and appropriation of the new fire truck, the Board of Assessment Appeals approval, and the Tax Assessor Authority, and the Board of Education uh, Admin Unit contract. Okay, I have changed. Yes, sir. Now, you'd like to, we have I'd a like suggestion to, really, to change the order? Yeah, I'd like to really change the order. Um, I think the first two should be, um, number seven and number eight should be moved up to, um, moved up one because there's a chance that Jim Turner will be there. And if he is, he's an employee, we want to get him out. All right, so you want to do uh, seven and eight ahead of the vote on the early voting act, yep. okay? All right. And then I want to take the Board of Education. Yeah, so one thing, Jack, these guys might be there also. I understand. Okay. But, but it'll be quicker to do the voting one first, do you think, or not? I don't know. Just I don't know, because I don't know how people feel about early voting, so I don't want to open up that can of worms. But I do know that I want to get some, some people out of there. I then want to move up the, um, we, we can do the, uh, I, I'd like to do the Board of Education admin contract because there's members of the administration that are going to be attending that meeting. I know that Marge, who's the head of human resources and Rich Rudel will be there. Um, obviously, um, Adley will be there, but you know, for those other two, who are doing long budget meetings also, I just like to move them up and get them. Well, we can, we can move them up and then just go right into the schools after that. Well, I was thinking then we can do the early voting because both of you were there. Um, the schools could be after that, and what I'm proposing is um, there, there's significant changes here to these two items. And while Ed Rochecker and I have been talking, and I have no doubt that both committees can cover things. Uh, we're adding approximately over $20 million to prior um, authorization. There are significant changes that are being made and other things that are being added. And I would truly recommend, and I've spoken to Chris Price and to Jill, that they do a present, that f and will introduce the bonding and go over high-level financials. Ed will report on some of it, but then we ask the HHR committee to present because I'm sure there's going to be significant questions on that, and better than Ed or myself answering them, I'd like the committee to answer them. 
And I think that's uh, I think that's good, yeah. so, and it's all education. I would take the the early voting act and put it after all of the board of ed stuff. Okay, that's that. up to you. I, yeah. I don't want to keep them here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just want someone to show up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like that. <laughs> but but yeah, Susan, um, that's gonna be late. I, I, I do think, you know, and they've done, for my committee, I believe that it's also, we've already sent out the presentations that they, that yeah. they did. The Board of Finance asked, uh, we had a really good conversation, if you missed that, um, on that, and they're coming back with some answers. So, um, and in fact, education's voting on that in the contract tonight. F and B will not be voting on the bonding until after the Board of Finance approves right. the bonds. Okay. So we're we're, we're a little ahead, but yeah. we know it's coming down the pike. So right, but yeah, I think that it's worthwhile. It may be a 15-minute presentation, but there's been significant questions in both of those other boards, and I'm sure the RTM will have similar questions. And I'd rather they answer it than me. All right, so. We'll lump the educations together, then go to the vote on the Connecticut early, and and then uh, continue with the fire truck and the assessment appeals and the tax assessor. <laughs> what's what's likely to take so long in the voter thing that they have to stay through all the education? Yeah, no one's going to stay here. Yeah. 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 Well, the RTM going to vote not Because you're only doing one. You're only saying you want one location. Well, that's our right? recommendation. Obviously, the committee and the RTM can. It's their ultimate decision, but we will, as the subject matter experts, recommend that. And we're in complete agreement. That's going to take five so, minutes. Yeah, why don't we just move that before, <laughs> right, in between? So you want, you want to sandwich it in between the <laughs> education items? Yeah. Yeah, we're going to need a break. All right. Let's put, let's put it right after A. Okay, so yeah, we'll, we'll put it in right after A. Yeah, we can do that. Should the education. Should be in and out, so and if we'll, they're not, I take full responsibility. I mean, it's just kind of like, I can say. All right, we so <laughs> we're, we're, we're going to do the admin contract, then the vote on Earl, on, on the Connecticut early. No, we're going to do um, the two appropriations for Sewer and Hanson. Right. Susan's recommendation is to then do the vote on the early, and then we'll go into the four school items. All right. And if we're, I mean, I hate to say this, but if we're before education, I'm not saying this for like my own, like, I don't want to sit around for it, but education draws a lot of people who will watch the meeting, and if that brings a little attention to early voting and that it's happening and things like that, it, it's, I think that's a good thing, personally, to have on the education crowd who may not be attuned to this stuff, because you know, obviously education is really important and has like the big following. If we can leverage off of that a little bit, I think it benefits us oh. and the community as a whole. Okay. I think that's a very good point. So that we, I yeah, maybe we should go after. Yeah. Yeah. I was trying to put you before, but it's no, right, you know, no, after no, we lose that out. We go yeah. before they're waiting, and so we get to leverage off yeah. of the education, yeah. you know, and so. Selfishly, the not good timing, but I think I'd like to no, I think grab it's your audience. Point. It's good. So <clears throat> we're going to do early voting. <laughs> okay. um, after the admin contract, no, okay. we're going to yeah. do it after after the Hanson Road. After Hanson Road, yeah. Oh, okay. five, six stays at six. And then six. where do we go from there? We go to and the then three. then we go to the board of ed admin unit contract and then the rest of the education the appropriations and then on from there the, on to the fire truck fire truck and yeah. the board of assessment assessments tax uh, assessor training. and that should do it when, yeah. when's the coffee break during this meeting oh, this would be good to have coffee well right, when do we open the bar up and the never <laughs> <laughs> i'll try to get a budget for coffee donuts there we go all right so uh, I, i've seen the budget <laughs> No, this is this year's budget. It's already been passed. <laughs> so can, I, can I uh, please have a motion to set the agenda for the uh, January 22nd meeting of the RTM as noted? You got that, Mark? <laughs> uh, for, Mark's putting his hand up, as, as, uh, so he's got it. Uh, second is Jack. All in favor? Aye. Thank Aye. you. Opposed? I hear none. 
if, if I might be yeah, able to understand. Uh, I've been speaking to Brendan, who's the chief of the New Rokin Fire Department. And while he's going to be there to, if we need him, to discuss the fire engine, um, and I know Channel 79 did something on the fire boat that they raised, I really think that it would be worthwhile that maybe in our April meeting we ask him to do a presentation to the full RTM on the fire boat, how they operate, and other things like that with other departments, uh, you know, with the other communities over there, how they raised six hundred thousand dollars to do this over five years. So um, I think it's a nice way to celebrate their accomplishment as well as our other fire departments. So I'm just putting that out there as a future for the fire boat for the fire boat presentation. Yes, we want to get it out, confused with the truck. That's yeah, it. no, out you know like in, okay. to start one of our meetings in April. All right. And, and Brendan said that... Uh, I will put it on the be agenda for our rules. Do that. Okay. Other thoughts? Other business? Oh, I'm sorry. May I jump in? Just the calendar? You included that? Did you want to... Uh, yes. We, <laughs> we found out that we managed to put the annual meeting of the RTM right smack dab on top of Veterans Day. So... <laughs> I thought I'd found every pothole in the calendar, but there was one left over, so we moved it to the following night. And yeah. the, the second day. change was yeah, in, in this calendar that was put in this package was the April meeting was put on the first night of Passover. So right. this is a revised calendar to move it to the following week. So the RTM will be on the 29th and rules will meet on Tuesday the 30th. Right. Yep. That's why it's in the... Well, we had no, you know, that was the only way we could accommodate all of these uh, things. And then we wind up with rules committee the following yeah. the following night on Tuesday because uh, we have to do that for the budget. So, uh, Just out of curiosity, somebody may have kids in the school because mine and the ones has graduated. When, we, when is spring break this year? Uh, seven weeks after the February break. Yeah. Well, that's all I do know. Okay, I'll, I'll look at it because Easter is very early, yeah. but Orthodox Easter coincides with Passover. So uh, I added, I'm adding down at the bottom of the calendar now each one of these pothole, uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, the holidays, etc., celebrations, yeah. Easter's, uh, Easter's, observances, etc., so that I can we, the next year we can try Easter's to avoid early, it. early, but Orthodox Easter and Passover are extremely yeah. late this year. Okay. So our team is now the 28th, is what I heard? 29th? 15th of the yeah. Is, yeah. Which is also present. The vacation is 15th to the 19th. Thank you. As the character said so. Yeah. We managed to. You'll have a week after the break. Right. Managed to duck those and step right into another one. Well. <laughs> okay. Any other business? Okay. I'll take a motion to adjourn. Yes, Susan. Second. Michael, all in favor, please rise. <laughs> I mean, good night, all. Um, Joe, have you met these guys? Uh, stay warm.